Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from sound for more it's Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to show you Coric, a new chorus effect from Kalum Audio. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. And indeed, if you um, want to know if there is a giveaway, check the title of the video and also check the video description for the instruction on how to enter the giveaway and also ensure that the giveaway is still active if you want to enter and you will check you will know that by checking if the winners have been announced in the video description thank you okay so let's um kick off we are inside aum and i have already created a setup so that we can go straight into hearing what coric sounds like i have a number of audio sources um, a grand piano. I normally use a grand piano to listen more carefully to what the effect does. And I introduced voice synth this time, just to make a bit of a change. We're going to listen how the chorus effect drums, so I'm using a hammerhead. And also we're going to hear what it sounds like on guitar, so we have a steel guitar there as well. As you can see, they're all connected to a mix bus A, and, that, and then on the last audio channel we have... Um, Coric as an effect. Now, don't pay attention too much on the DSP on the CPU utilization because if you check the um, the audio sources, they are all running. They're all connected to the same um, AUM keyboard, so that means that um, I will be running each one of them, but I will be muting and unmuting different channels. Okay, so let's start with the first one, Grand Piano. Okay, and then let's introduce Coric, and then let's go to the initialize preset and let's listen to what it sounds like okay as you can see up here you have a, a selection for preset you click what it says in it and you have different categories or presets or banks so presets a group and you can for example go for classic chorus like this one you can also go to the next preset using these arrows here and also to the previous one using the left arrow. And these are the typical uh, presets that you have uh, or you might have heard through other chorus effects. Okay, okay, let's go through um, what the parameters, the user interface. So on the right hand side here you can save the preset and you can also generate a random preset and you can also delete a preset and then here you have some additional information on the i button you can see it has a number of stages so starting from the left hand side you have a filter yeah and you can decide what type of filter so low pass band pass or high pass and then of course you can change the cutoff and resonance for the filter that you have selected so let's try so low pass Actually, let's go back to the any preset and let's apply again that low pass. Resonance. Let's try band pass. High pass. And of course, it's important to use a filter because you might want to filter out some of the sounds, some of that audio source coming in. Next, you have a stage where you can preserve the formants which is very useful if uh, inside your uh, audio source you have vocals, for example. And you can also activate pitch here. When you have that active, you can change up and down by 12 semitones using this dial here. Okay, so let's try. Double click to go back to the default. Of course, on the right hand side here at the bottom, you have on the last stage a mix. It's like your dry wet effect, right? Um, overall, at the moment, it's, it's the maximum, so you hear the entire wet effect. But if you were to go to something like 50%, then you will hear the original sound and also the sound, which in this case I'm going to shift up. And it's quite nice because in this way you can create harmony. Right, so double click there. Now, the next dial, the pitch amount, uh, allows you to establish how much of the pitch that has been shifted you want uh, or not shifted and you want to go to the next stage where you do modulation. So let's have a look at the next stage. Up here you have a graph which shows you 
what is happening. So let's set the number of, of the chorus voice down to the minimum, which is two. You see the changes automatically happening up here. By the way, if you click on the graph, you go to this option where you can change the frames per second, turn it on and off as well. Now, you have rates here for the chorus in terms of speed. At the moment, you can see as I'm changing, as I'm changing it is um, synchronized to the bits per minute. And that's because they have sync option here on. If you disable that, of course, you can go by hertz as well. And as you can see, as I'm increasing the hertz, you can see that the complexity is increasing because I'm going to a faster rate. You can change the depth here as well of the chorus. You can see as I'm going up, the amplitude vertically is going up. You can change the type of modulation in terms of waveform at the moment is random but if i was to select the sine wave you can see it changes straight away here on the graph but also it will sound very different you can hear straight away that you have that um, feeling of a sine uh, waveform of course you can increase the number of voices here and you can see they're coming up here right so let's actually set it up um, to only um to only two and you can distribute the phase between the voice differently and see what happens here the, in terms of phase that has been shifted for the second voice. You can also change the looseness in terms of timing for the voices here. You can also change the spread on the stereo channel. Listen when you increase the number of voices. Look at the complexity up here. Interesting. Let's lower the by seven semitones, something like that. And um, then you have additional option here. Warm in gives you an increase of 3.5 decibel in terms of that uh, analog style saturation. You hear that particularly if you have something like an audio source like voice that comes out really nicely. You can hear a little bit of difference. Dark just um, um, makes the higher frequency duller in terms of quality of sound. And then, of course, you can flip on the right channel the modulation, which gives you an interesting character. And next, you have here the width. And so you can change the width of um, at this point in the stage um, of the effect. And you can go from a wider one to a narrower one. And, um, and then it's done using uh, mid and side, of course, changes. You can hear it better now. You have a gain, of course, to increase the gain. And finally, a mix, as I explained earlier. Okay, so now you have the basic understanding of how Coric works. So let's change the audio source. So we're going to mute that uh, grand piano and we're going to unmute um, um, Hammerhead. So let's go to that init effect again and actually let's go to miscellaneous and you find the number of drum presets so let's try the first one first of all without the mix kick drum as there now let's listen with the mix really nice as effect but let's try something else this one is quite interesting drum Rattle. And so on and so forth. You are some really, really nice presets. Okay, so let's change again audio source. So we're going to mute uh, Hammerhead and we're going to unmute steel guitar. So Let's go for some guitar effect, this butterfly. Um, so let's start without the effect. Mm -hmm. 
really nice effect. Next one, challenge the balance. Change to the next one, friendly. So you can hear that uh, rate which makes um, some significant changes, uh, i.e. the rate is high. Um, let me show you one which is quite nice on guitar, the Progscape, really nice. So again, with our effect, with effect. So you can hear that harmony which is being created. You have the looseness quite high here, but you also have the pitch which has been shifted as well. And the mix is a maximum as well. And notice also the dark and warm settings which are active as well. Now, again, let's uh, change the audio source. Let's mute the steel guitar and let's unmute voice synth. And let's choose something um, like a welcome um, effect. Hopefully that will work. And um, let's go to vocal now and choose that add the choir. Then let's have it with our mix. And now let's add the mix. Without it, with the effect. So you can hear it's adding that uh, choir, really, really nice. This one, I really, really like it. Actually, let's um, uh, change the type of preset from uh, uh, voice synth. So let's go to something like robot um, effect. <laughs> Now, this one sounds quite nice, a big welcome. So let's try this one. And let's try with the Alvin effect. Without it, with the effect now. Really, really, really nice. Now let's change uh, um, effect again. Let's go for this dive low. Without effect. Really nice. Okay, let's go to the next one, which is one of my favorite. Again, let's uh, set the mixer to um, zero and let's change again the preset to this one, which is quite nice. Really nice deep voice. So let's go to correct. So you heard that um, uh, without effect, but I'll play again. And now with the effect. Incredibly deep. Really, really, really nice. So, but there is another one which I really, really love as well, the telephone duet as well. So again, without effect. With the effect. As you can see, I've adjusted a bit of the game because it was clipping. Of course, you can, you don't always have to apply um, preset to, like in this case, vocals to to vocal sound sources, you can also apply any preset really. So let's try, for example, from keys, this bed springs. With the effect. With effect. Okay, let's change. It's quite nice, deeply ghosts. Really, really nice. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, this demonstration and short tutorial on Coric. It's really nice, great um, chorus effect from Caleb Audio. Okay, see you next time. Bye.